<gasps> Who's your best Kirby? You are. Yes, you are. Did you? Oh, hello, hello. Welcome to GGSP. I'm Jem. Coming up on today's show, Rad builds a bridge and struggles to get over it in her review of Poly Bridge 2. Plus, I take a look back at the history of Animal Crossing and see how it's become such a worldwide hit. And hit me up if you've got some good turnip prices because I have got a heap to unload. <laughs> so, so many turnips. Anyway, on with the show. I never really thought of myself as someone who was capable of building a super great bridge. That is, until the brilliant puzzle game Polybridge came along and said, hey, maybe you're wrong not to explore such a dream. And in my exploration, I found that no, I was absolutely right the first time. I am bad at building bridges. Now Dry Cactus, the New Zealand studio behind the Indie Smash, is back with more haphazard bridge madness in Polybridge 2. Bridge 2 follows the footsteps of the previous game very closely. You build a bridge by placing different materials on a schematic, then run the simulation to see if your bridge can carry the vehicle to its destination. Get everyone where they're going and you've technically passed the level. But like all good puzzle games, what starts simple can become very complicated very quickly. There's a whole bunch of various vehicles which move and behave differently. Some will be slow and heavy or zippy and light. You'll need to keep this in mind while building, because the type of vehicle can change what's possible for you and your bridge. There's also planes and boats to avoid, and sometimes multiple target points to hit. You'll often need to be using hydraulics to move pieces around too. Or at least you can use hydraulics. One of the great things about Polybridge is that you can use any solution you want, as long as it works. Each level has a budget, and notes if you complete it under budget or without your bridge having any breaks. Building a bridge is easy, but building a sturdy bridge that's also under budget, sometimes it can seem impossible. This game is hard, but thankfully Polybridge 2 has a bunch of new features to help you along. The game now highlights where the first break in your bridge is, to help you know what needs attention. Springs have also been added to give you some extra bouncy fun. Like hydraulics, springs are basically an extra thing that I personally don't know how to predict or use properly. But giving it a red hot go is half the fun. Progressively deleting more and more parts of your bridge to try and make it cheaper is the second half of the fun. Until the whole thing comes crashing down. But if everything is going to fall apart, at least it looks very good doing so. While the build screen is fairly basic, the simulation is all style. This game looks gorgeous. It keeps all the charm of the first poly bridge while adding an extra bit of flair. I'm so glad they kept that look because it's beautiful. And to me, it's a really important part of my connection to the game. So is the music. Poly bridge has possibly my favorite game soundtrack ever. It's so soothing and friendly, which suits the game really well, because there's a strong community behind it. There are so many potential solutions to the same problem. And once you complete a level, you can see your spot on the leaderboard, as well as a gallery of replays other players have uploaded. Here you can see all sorts of wild and wacky approaches to bridge building. I love seeing things I never would have even thought of. People are mind-blowingly creative. I mean, just look at this solution I found online. I like this game so much. I love how silly you can be and how it gives you a puzzle with an open-ended solution. That can be a really, really tricky thing to do in a game while still making it challenging and interesting. But Polybridge 2 does it all and does it in style. I'm giving it five out of five rubber chickens. Oh, 
another week, another bountiful bundle of gaming news for us to scoop into. First up, Sony has finally shown off some of the games set to release for the PS5. Highlights include Gran Turismo 7, the next installment in the driving simulation series. A new Ratchet & Clank game, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, which is said to support ray tracing. Oh, this could really be Clank's time to shine. Quite literally. <laughs> we also saw that Little Big Planet's Hessian hero, Sackboy, is set to star in an all-new 3D platforming adventure. Some fruit field hijinks in Bug Snacks from the makers of Octodad. And another fellow robot, Astrobot, will jetpack into a third person adventure game, Astro's Playroom. Loving all that robot representation. <laughs> the long awaited design of the PS5 console was also revealed, as well as the fact there will also be a digital edition of the hardware. Oh, the next generation is so close you can almost taste it! <gasps> Exciting times ahead! <laughs> Moving along now to some more news, Mojang Studios has announced that the recently released Minecraft Dungeons will receive some DLC in July. The Jungle Awakens update will bring some jungle to the dungeon, as well as new missions, new weapons, armor, pets, and artifacts. We also heard about another themed DLC, Creeping Winter, due out later in the year. And the developers are working on adding cross-platform multiplayer as well. Also in the news this week, Sega has announced the release of the Game Gear Micro, a mini retro console to celebrate their 60th anniversary. These mini versions of the original 1990 Game Gear 8-bit handheld console will initially release in Japan and come preloaded with four games each. The color of the case will determine which games, however, with Sonic the Hedgehog, P.O. P.O. 2, and Sonic and Tails amongst them. I'm not sure my scoops could handle a console that small, but at least there is a magnifying accessory for that tiny screen. <laughs> and in other news, football or soccer fans rejoice! The English Premier League is returning! But in the absence of live crowds, broadcaster Sky Sports has teamed up with game publisher EA Sports to produce some special crowd cheers and chants from FIFA video games to use instead. The first goal of the match, and the lead certainly doesn't flatter them. Now it's time for the Extra Scoop! A group known as Electronicos Fantasticos make all kinds of weird and wonderful things out of old tech. And recently, they've put some computer components to creative use with this so-called Fantar, made from PC cooling fans. The speed of the fan affects the pitch of the sound it produces. <laughs> I certainly am a fan. <laughs> and that's all for the scoop this week. Now for my signature sign-off. How about goodbye and good games? Hmm, it's getting closer. Even if you've never played an Animal Crossing game, chances are you've probably heard of it. It's Nintendo's cozy and colourful life simulation series, starring a bunch of anthropomorphised animal villagers and, of course, you. The latest instalment in the series, Animal Crossing New Horizons, has enticed many to take up a virtual island life, including those who might not have otherwise considered themselves gamers. There's no doubt it's become one of the biggest video games at the moment. Before considering why this seemingly simple sim seems to have captured the world's imagination, I thought I'd take a quick stroll down the quaint village path that is the history of Animal Crossing. The very first Animal Crossing game technically wasn't an Animal Crossing game at all. It began as Dobutsu no Mori, or Animal Forest, a Japan-exclusive Nintendo 64 game released in 2001. One of the game's creators, Katsuya Egushi, initially envisioned it as a social game. Inspired by his own experience of moving to a new place and being far away from loved ones. One of the key parts of its development, though, included a very short-lived piece of hardware, the Nintendo 64 DD. 
The DD stands for Disk Drive, and it was a piece of gear designed to accompany the Nintendo 64. It would offer expanded save memory, as well as an early online service called Randnet. And crucially for Animal Crossing, or Forest, the Nintendo 64 DD was also capable of including an internal clock, opening up the possibility of using real time within its games. Though the 64DD had a limited lifespan, releasing only in Japan in 1999 and then finding itself discontinued in 2001, Animal Forest nevertheless launched in Japan as a regular Nintendo 64 game. But the real-time clock remained, in a slightly altered form as part of the game's cartridge, and it wasn't long before an enhanced version of Animal Forest was ported to Nintendo's GameCube as Dobutsu no Mori E+, and released in Japan in late 2001. It arrived in North America in 2002 and Australia in 2003, with the title Animal Crossing. The next instalment to grace our consoles would be Animal Crossing Wild World for the Nintendo DS. It was super popular and proved to be well suited to handheld gameplay. It also introduced touchscreen control and Wi-Fi capability, enabling you to visit your friends' towns. Jumping ahead to 2008 came the release of Animal Crossing Let's Go to the City, otherwise known as City Folk, on the Nintendo Wii. It used Wii Speak for the first time, allowing players to chat while playing together. Then came Animal Crossing New Leaf for the Nintendo 3DS in 2013. Here you're entrusted with the duties of the town mayor. New Leaf ushered in even more new characters, customization options and amiibo. Over the years, the series has also spawned a number of spin-off games. Aside from the underwhelming Animal Crossing Plaza for the Wii U, which was more of a chat lobby than an actual game, 2015's Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer for Nintendo 3DS honed in on two key features, designing and decorating. That same year, we saw Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival for the Wii U, a Mario Party-style virtual board game of sorts. Many fans of the series were disappointed by this one, as it was not the full home console Animal Crossing experience they may have hoped for, and it seemed to be mostly designed to sell Amiibo. More recently, 2017's Animal Crossing Pocket Camp for mobile devices brought a stripped-back experience for a new mobile audience. Though it's a free-to-start game, it's rather reliant on in-game transactions, which isn't my cup of tea. But there's still a pretty strong monthly player base, particularly after the launch of New Horizons on the Switch. Which brings us back to Animal Crossing New Horizons. Released for the Nintendo Switch in March 2020, its setting is on a relatively deserted island. Many of the same core functions and features from the series have stuck around. We also met some familiar faces we may have Animal Cross paths with in previous titles. Like Tom Nook, the enterprising Tanuki, Isabel, the industrious administrator and the embodiment of Sunshine, Blathers, the bug-phobic museum curator, and Mabel Abel and her sister Sable, the owners of the local clothes shop. Now, I'm not saying Mabel is definitely related to Sonic the Hedgehog, but I'm also not saying that she isn't. Not to mention miscellaneous other animal villagers who might make their way onto your island's utopia, with their own unique interests and personality traits. Not all of which you'll necessarily gel with. <coughs> Chops. And though this new addition is undoubtedly an evolution for the series, it's still kind of more of the same, gameplay-wise. Which brings me back to the question of why is it so darn popular right now? New Horizons reportedly sold over 11 million copies worldwide in just 11 days of launching. It's the best sales start ever for a Nintendo Switch title, exceeding Nintendo's expectations for how well it might do. It's smashed sales figures for past games in the series, and it's even boosting sales of other Animal Crossing titles like Pocket Camp. Sure, Animal Crossing had grown a large fan following over the years, but something about when New Horizons was released created the perfect environment for a game like this to thrive. The release date coincided almost exactly with the global response to COVID-19, the introduction of social distancing and instructions to stay at home. Maybe it's the appeal of whiling away hours in a virtual island space, especially when there are limits on real-world travel. Or the wholesome and relaxing gameplay loop, the capacity for creativity, customization, decoration and design. Maybe it's the cute puns and kooky characters, or the social aspect. Instead of physically going over to a friend's place, you can visit their Animal Crossing island instead. 
Of course, some may find the Animal Crossing style of game tedious, and I can kind of understand why. There's not a whole lot of story or actual game to it. The dialogue can become repetitive, and the crafting and terraforming could definitely be more efficient. But yet, even as you plunge yourself further and further into Nook Debt, it's all just so charming and calming, with a great sense of real-time progression and achievement to pull you through the changing seasons. The world of Animal Crossing is comforting and reliable in a time when things in the real world can feel a bit uncertain. In many ways, Animal Crossing New Horizons has achieved what Katsuya Eguchi intended for the series all those years ago. It's an accessible social game, all about family, friendship and community, and allows you to connect with people you might be far away from and just hang out. And it couldn't have come at a better time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I know two happily wed llamas begging for photos. I hope they're like dinosaur statues and water features. Time for another Ask SP. Though the inbox is so chock-a-block, it's hard to know where to start. Though I have heard the beginning is a very good place to start. So let's kick things off with this video question from Vanessa. Hey GGSP. I just have a few questions for you guys. Do you know any good free games websites that I can play on? And do you know some good PC games? Don't have to be free, just any type of games. Thanks, that's all. Thanks, Vanessa. In answer to your first question about free online games, well, Darren is always talking about this free online archive of some classic games on this site called archive.org. There's a real treasure trove of great old school titles to discover, like Lemmings, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, Disney's Aladdin, and heaps more. There may be some titles in the library recommended for gamers over the age of 15, though, so maybe check in with your grown ups for a bit of guidance. You might also want to check out Roblox. It's a pretty accessible platform with all sorts of free games available to browse and play. Though some games do tend to be better than others, and I think most Roblox games are best enjoyed with your friends. Aside from those sites, you can also seek out some free browser games. For example, Wonder Putt, a colorful little golf game. Or Line Rider, where you draw your own tracks for a little sledder. Sounds simple, but there's a lot of potential for creativity. I also always like to recommend the stripped back version of Minecraft called Minecraft Classic. It's a simple, great way to get a free taste of Minecraft in your browser if you don't already own the full version in some form. As for good PC games in general, well, aside from Minecraft, which is an excellent choice, Portal 2 is one of the all time greats. I would highly recommend trying it if you haven't already. Another great is Journey, which is now available on PC. Then there's the farming fun of Stardew Valley and the heartfelt Ori in the Blind Forest, as well as Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Or there's Rayman Legends for some popping platforming. Untitled Goose Game is brilliant if you want to tap into your mischievous side. And if you're a fan of animals, you might like to give Planet Zoo a try. Oh, so many great games on the PC and so many great questions. So let's move on to another question. And this one comes from Zacharias in Hobart, Tasmania. Can you name any other soccer games besides FIFA and Pez? Thank you. Thanks, Zacharias. Hmm, other soccer or football games besides FIFA or Pez? Well, they're the most well known at the moment, but I'm going to give Darren a call and see if he knows about any others. Hello, hello, Darren speaking. Hi, Darren. Uh, I've just got a question here about other soccer or football games besides FIFA or Pez. Do you know any? Oh, affirmative. Uh, aside from FIFA and Pez, which stands for Pro Evolution Soccer, Football Manager is another current soccer game series. It brings all the stats and team management aspects of soccer to centre stage. Or rather, centre field. <laughs> There's also a mobile soccer game called Sociable Soccer for Apple Arcade, which is planned for PC and console as well. In fact, throughout the history of gaming, there have actually been loads of different soccer games. From the soccer arcade games of the late 70s and 80s, to home console games like Pele's Soccer, aka Championship Soccer, and the Kickoff series and its various sequels and spin offs including Kickoff Revival, which released for PS4 and Vita in 2016. Oh, and who could forget Sensible World of Soccer, which was quite popular in the 1990s and continued to be thought of quite fondly through its various incarnations and re-releases. 
Then there's the Actua Soccer series, the 1995 original of which brought a full 3D graphics engine to the soccer game experience. There have also been a bunch of soccer style video games featuring some recognisable characters. Like Mario Smash Football and Mario Strikers Charged Football, Disney Sports Soccer, as well as Super Nintendo's Mega Man Soccer. You might say that Rocket League is kind of a soccer game too. And that's just to name a few. I really could go on and on. Thanks though, Darren. That's heaps. You're really kicking goals there with your soccer games history. Thank you, Will. I'm no dummy run. Uh, that's a soccer term. No. Uh, right. Okay. Well, thanks again, Darren. Bye. No. Oh, bye bye. <sighs> okay. Now let's kick things forward with this question from Ash. Hi, Good Game Spawn Point. I have one question for you. Have you heard any rumours about a new Super Mario Odyssey game coming out? Thanks, Ash. If you're hoping for some goss about a Super Mario Odyssey sequel, well, there was some speculation about the possibility when Nintendo Japan advertised jobs for projects last year. And there have been other rumours about possible remasters of some older Mario games, like Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine, to celebrate the 35th anniversary of Mario this year. We do know that a new Paper Mario game is coming out in July, but I haven't seen anything concrete when it comes to info on a Super Mario Odyssey sequel. And it's always hard to know exactly what's planned until we get an official announcement. Now, I believe we are officially out of time, but if you have something you want to ask me, Rad, Jem, or Darren, you can go here to send it in. And if it's a video we use on the show, you'll get some cool GGSP stuff. But that is officially the end of Ask SP this week. And I think you'll agree, it's a great place to end Ask SP for this week. Well, that's all the GGSP we have time for today. But next week, we'll walk back to the 90s with the virtual reality adventure of Pixel Ripped 1995. Real gamers need power. And of course, if you're craving another bite of the GGSP cherry, make sure to check out the ABC Me app, where Will gets all tied up trying to solve the deviously tricky puzzles of filament. But until next time, may all your games be good ones. Rat out. Will out. Gem out.